Okay. Hello, people of God. It's Pastor Stephen uh, with the Bible study, our virtual Bible study today on Friday, the 23rd of December. We're going to look at Galatians 4. And as we begin, I'm going to ask Carrie, who has not been able to join us for a while, but he's here today, I'm going to ask him to give us our opening prayer. Okay. Gracious Father in heaven, Lord, we thank you so much for this beautiful, wonderful day. Lord, as we prepare to celebrate uh, the birth of your son, Jesus Christ, the light of the world. And Lord, as we, as we study and fellowship here in your word today, I pray that your Holy Spirit would take the words as in our minds to write them upon the tablets of our heart so that it becomes us. We ask this in your son, Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Um, let's get started. At the end, if we have time, and I think we will because this is a short passage, I will tell a little bit about the Christmas Eve service coming up tomorrow night. Um, but I don't want to, I will get totally drawn into talking about that and not this. Unfortunately, um, this is not the passage I'll be preaching on for our virtual Christmas Eve service. This is for the 27th, which is the first Sunday after Christmas, and it is part of Christmas tide. As you know, the 12 days of Christmas are not the Advent countdown to Christmas. 12 days of Christmas are the days of the Feast of Christ, or the Mass of Christ, uh, which we don't normally say it that way, but it goes for 12 days starting on December 25th, and it goes all the way till January, I think it's 6th, with Epiphany. So it is good and appropriate to celebrate Christmas, to keep your tree up, to sing Christmas carols, or do anything Christmassy for those 12 days. Um, so it's not almost over, it's just beginning. And uh, so on this Sunday of Christmas, on the 27th, I'll be preaching from this passage in Galatians, <clears throat> which as I mentioned is short, <clears throat> but it has some kind of key things. So we're only going to take one verse at a time. And since you came on first, Jackie, I'll ask you to read Galatians 4, verse 4. Okay. But when the time had fully come, God sent his son, born of a woman, born under law. And we'll just stop right there. So this doesn't, it doesn't talk about wise men or shepherds or angels or stars, but is this talking about the nativity? <clears throat> Jackie Dundon, glad to see you joining us. We just started our first verse. So I'll ask again, but when the fi time finally came, had come, God sent his son, born of a woman, born of, under the law. So is that a Christmas verse? I, I don't think so. Okay. My, uh, my notes say the time set by God for his children to become adult sons and heirs, showing that Christ was truly human, subject to the Jewish law. It all seems to be about the Jewish law. Okay, okay, that's definitely there, uh, talking about time and born under the law. Anyone else have a thought on it? My Bible reads, it has a footnote. Okay. Jesus didn't arrive late or early. He came right on schedule. Some suggest world conditions were ripe for the rapid spread of the gospel. The ruling Romans had ushered in an era of relative peace through law and order. Their network of roads made travel more convenient and widespread use of the Greek language simplified communication. At the same time, the proliferation of empty religions among many people created a spiritual hunger with them in them for something genuine. Very interesting. I love that. Just the aspect, it's not mentioned in the Bible, but Roman roads, that was a huge technological feat for its day. And apparently there are, there are little patches of Roman roads that still exist. They're not used for cars or anything anymore. They're kind of through wilderness places that aren't getting a lot of wear, so they're not getting worn down. But that was a big deal that they had a network of roads and all roads lead to you heard that saying um, yeah because really it did at that point if you got on any road you could eventually get your way to rome um 
and then also the Greek language, which became a trade language, really because of commerce, that it, like you want to be able to talk with the guy that you're giving your fish to, that's giving you whatever else you're getting trading from them. So at least you get a, a preliminary version of a language you can all speak, which was kind of a, a rough cut Greek, but that's what the New Testament is written in. Oh, very fascinating, Linda. Thanks for sharing that about the time being right for sending Jesus. Uh, um, any more thoughts on this? Yeah, just looking at it, uh, the basic part of it's it's focusing on the human side uh, of Jesus because he was born of a woman and under the law, just like everybody else. And he's subject to all that. And under the law, there, we could go on for a long time just about that, but we won't. But the gospel writers and Paul definitely take time to try to explain how when Jesus came, it, it fulfilled all sorts of things that needed to be fulfilled. So, mm. you know, um, and this is Paul, by the way, writing to Galatians, if, if, if someone didn't know that yeah. um, that's the author here. Um, but um, so it's just kind of a passing reference, but yeah. Yeah, five kicks into that. I just didn't go that far. Thank you. Look, 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 look back there. Anyone else? So I'm going to disagree with Judy and say, I think this is, it's not Christmassy, but it is about the incarnation. It's about God becoming flesh and coming at the right time. So in that way, it is appropriate for that to be part of our reading for, for that Sunday. Uh, Judy, would you read on from verse five? Uh, read verse five. Is that what yes, you're please. saying? Yes. Okay. It's talking about uh, Jesus being born under the law to redeem those under law that we might receive the full rights of sons. Full rights of sons. Mine has something else. To, um, Linda, what does yours say there? Actually, mine doesn't have anything on that. Do you have, let me hear your verse five then, please. I don't have that either. No verse five? Mm -mm. I, oh, you mean when I read it from the Bible? Yeah. Oh. Oh, yeah. Um, just, I just want to hear what your translation says. It's the uh, same, I think. It's NIV, to redeem those under law that we might receive the full rights of sons. Full rights of sons. Carrie, does yours say that? No, it says that uh, to redeem those under the law that we might receive adoption to sonship. And that's what I have, adoption yeah. to sonship. And Jackie, exactly. what does yours say? I have the, um, the same as Judy. Okay, so it's not a matter of, well, it's uh, three against two, so that's the one that's right. It's, it's a matter, because that's just the Bible we happen to be working from. But it's a matter of, those are two different ways to translate whatever was originally said in Greek. Um, and I'm still trying to remember what it is to receive, what, in, what does your say again, Judy? Oh, uh, full right rights of sons. sons. Full rights mm -hmm. to sons, and Carrie's okay. mind says adoption to sonship. So, um, ah, full rights. So it doesn't actually say adoption. Uh, so for me, as a preacher, it behooves me to go back to the original Greek, which I don't have quick access to right now, and see if the word for adoption is actually there. And then it's worth me looking up and saying, you know, is this a word that really does mean adopt, or is it one that's kind of borrowed that, that we're assuming it means adoption and you might I let me apologize for this past Sunday from our Bible study I realized there was another place where I was really excited about talking about the phrase um now oh, it's going out of my head um that was in my translation but it wasn't everybody's translation oh boy if I can just pull it up quickly and Nope, I had the wrong one. Does anyone remember what it was last week? Last week? I might. I, might. I, pay, I make notes. Let me just see. Oh, good. Okay. See if I wrote it down. While she's looking it up, the thing <laughs> was, I didn't want to make a huge point about something if it's really just sort of an odd translation and wasn't what it was really supposed to say. So that... Um, yeah, as a preacher, I'm under God's word and under God, and it's not about hey, here's a really neat message, whether it's true or not. I want to make sure that I'm really grounded in what I say. So I did some research and 
uh, I remember finding that it was an awkward passage. Nobody can translate it easily into English, but the one, oh, I know what it was, uh, about it being impossible for all things are, are nothing is impossible for God. And other translations, oh, yeah, nothing yeah. will be impossible for God. Right. And then other translations said, like, God can do anything. It didn't quite say that, but okay, which one is it? Because I want to make sure that's what I'm preaching from. And my understanding from biblical Greek scholar Bill Mounts was that either one is okay and it's not a place to be overly technical. And in fact, he told about having a, an engineer neighbor that is very precise about his language, but most of the time we get our meanings across without being super precise and we're glad that we're not. And if someone says, what time are you going to meet me? We're so glad they don't say um, 1 p.m. 13 and 52 seconds. You know, that would be horrible. If that's the way we felt we had to talk. So anyway, so taking that less, oh, and so I apologize that last Sunday I had a pretty rough sermon and um, I had a lot of distractions going on that morning, uh, which in retrospect are funny, but at that point, uh, they kind of got me so discombobulated that I forgot how the Lord's Prayer goes. Did, did any of you catch that? <laughs> yes. I lost my place. And here's what happens um, when railroad tracks are going somewhere um, and there's a switch, they can go this way or go that way. The last time I did the Lord's Prayer, I went with trespasses because I was doing a, a funeral uh, for a family that I knew a lot of the members were Catholic. So I went with trespasses. And then here I come Sunday, coming down the track, and I think I just was, whoa, I just got lost. And I, and I, I just stopped. And I looked to Martha, and she just got lost. But, <clears throat> and uh, I think Malin in the balcony finally <clears throat> shouted out, um, forgive us our debts. And we got back on track. But <clears throat> I was def definitely a little distracted this past Sunday. Uh, and I apologize for that. Let's see if I can be on track with only uh, only four verses to preach on this Sunday. It will be a short sermon this Sunday because we're singing Christmas carols. So, to redeem those under the law that they might redeem, might receive full rights of sons or adoption to sonship. And I know that there are some translators that are going to want to make sure that it doesn't feel like it's just about men or guys. So they'll say adoption is children, or they'll say something like that. And that's a legitimate way to translate those as well. Although, if you're going back to biblical times, there definitely were more rights for sons. And so you could make the argument that this is saying men and women get this, uh, the rights of Hebrew sons that they would have gotten before, which Hebrew women did not get. That's a side note, though. But um, the point I'm going to... I want to preach on for this Sunday is adoption and that we are adopted And this passage is to me is saying Jesus came so that we can be adopted. Does that, does that seem to follow from that? Yeah. I think so. Carrie, would you read the next verse, verse six? Because you are his sons, God sent the spirit of his son into our hearts. The spirit who calls out Abba father, Thank you. Have you've seen that name before? Does anyone know about um, Abba? Mm -hmm. What What do you know about it? Well, I'll just I just know that that's what that means. I don't know beyond any it's, more depth. So it's that. the Hebrew name yeah. for. It's actually it has more of a gist of daddy than father, and um, so this is a reminder that uh, though. Paul was writing in Greek because that was the language that would get to the most of the Once in a while, he jumps into a reference to either Hebrew or Aramaic. And in fact, in the Gospels, we have the same thing, that uh, the writers will go on and they'll speak, and they're writing in Greek, but once in a while, there's a phrase Jesus said they really want to quote, like uh, when someone comes up to him, uh, yeah, Eli, Eli. Lama Sabachthani, which I only know phonetically. I don't really know those words, but that's what Jesus says when he says um, to, to take, when he is in the Garden of Gethsemane and 
praying to the Father to take away this cup, but not my will, but yours be done. No, nope, that's not where it is. It's, it's, uh, no, it's when he's on the cross. He says, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani, which means, God, my God, um, why have you forsaken me? Which comes from Psalm 22. And that would have been so ingrained in Hebrew writers' um, consciousness that that would, it's worth him saying that in the original language there. So we just get one word, Abba, uh, which was the name of a Swedish pop band in the 70s, <laughs> but it's also uh, the Hebrew word for father. Uh, my, my notes follow what you said about um, expre expressive of a, a especially close relationship mm -hmm. with God. The, I love that, Judy. Special close relationship with, with God. So, yeah, we're not just citizens. We're not just servants, although we're called servants, too. In fact, the word doulos can sometimes be translated slaves. But I love that we're not just citizens or servants or members, but we are family. And we can call God Father. God. We can call our, our God Father. Yes. Anything more about that? Six. Yeah, I just um, tying in the whole looking at the big t togetherness, talking about being fully human, subject under the law, just like any of us are born, but then coming into the divine aspect of himself to, to redeem those under the law, that we receive legal rights or adoption to sonship, um, because we are a son, his sons. And he sent him to be in our hearts to and mm -hmm. making it personal, calling God daddy. You know, it's something that it's awesome to be able to have that aspect. Um, and then tying in to where we had a difference of adoption or legal rights. It ties into the Roman law that he's talking about being under the laws there under Roman law and adoption. If somebody was adopted, just because you're adopted, you gain all the legal rights under that family. I like that. So that's tying in the two adoption and legal rights. And it's given that aspect if we are come in accepting him, he comes in our hearts. He lives in us. We're adopted and we have all the legal rights that Jesus gets from his father that they become ours too. That's pretty amazing <laughs> that those are ours. Hello, Jackie Klosser. Good to see you. Hi. Sorry. I didn't realize what time it was. <laughs> no problem. I didn't realize it was Wednesday until a couple <laughs> minutes before one. All right. Um, I just noticed something here, too. This is a Trinitarian verse. The Father, Son, and the Spirit and God are all mentioned in that verse. Yes. Yeah. And... Um, as I think most of you might know from about the theology of the Trinity, there is no one verse or passage where someone explains the Trinity and says, okay, look, there's one person, there's one God, but three persons that exist uh, eternally, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. It's never explained that way. So it's from scriptures that we start to put it together. This one by itself would not lead us to think, oh, there's a Trinity, clearly, because it says Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. You couldn't make that argument just from this, but it is one of the rare verses yeah. that has all three mentioned. I never realized that before to you point that out. Interesting. So verse 7, uh, our unseen Bible study member, Linda, would you read that for us? Yeah. So you are no longer a slave, but a son. And since you are a son, God has made you also an heir. An heir. Cool. Uh, so we do have the word slave in there, which I, I yeah. know the Greek there is doulos. Um, D-O-U-L-O-S. Um, I'm just throwing out that I know a Greek word. Big deal. <laughs> um, but it's not saying, oh, it is saying no longer a slave. Okay. But there are other places where we talk about being servants or slaves of God. And we don't like the word slave. It has so many negative connotations. But I think in that day, they would have had a little different understanding of that. But I love that 
if that's what you were laboring under, that assumption that we're just God's slaves, this is so different from other religions that you're just, there's an angry God out there and you're, you're hoping you do enough to make that God happy with you. This is saying this God loves you like a good daddy. Yeah. I like the footnote here. It says, as adopted children of God, we share with Jesus all rights to God's resources. As God's heirs, we can claim what he has provided to us, our full identity as his children. I love that. Very good. It's reminding me of a song, or there are a couple songs like being of a ch uh, children of the king or a child of the king. And I think I think there's some t-shirts that say, like, I'm a princess because my daddy's a king or something like that. And uh, uh, yeah, you're God's children. That, that really does have a whole different, we've kind of grown up with that, kind of assuming that, but that for, that's pretty radical new stuff for the people that were reading this. Uh, so yeah, any other thoughts or comments on this? Uh, just overall, a little broader picture. I know as in talking with many people, different places, they talk about being a child of God, but they don't know anything about God. They say, we're God, everybody's God's children. And uh, the under, whoops, where'd I go? Am I still on with you? You are. Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't know. Anyway, um, claiming to be a, a, a children of God just because we're children he loves everybody. I said, you know, before you're adopted, before you gain the legal rights, we're all orphans in the world. We don't have a daddy, spiritually speaking. So that when we come to Jesus through that spirit that enters in us, uh, and we come acceptance and we, we change, we turn from our wicked ways, our sinful ways, the world, then we're adopted. That's when we receive everything that Jesus gave us on the cross, the forgiveness. And that's when we receive eternal life. So we are children of God. And then we're, we're equal with everybody else that's in him. I, I love that you carry and, and Jackie Herzog, you've been doing this too. You're doing boots on the ground ministry. And I know, um, it is not a rare occurrence for you to share with someone that's in a place of hurt and need. And God uses that and uses your availability to help that person become adopted on the spot, right? Every day. Yeah, it's amazing. Praise God. Any other thoughts? Oh, okay, so um, oh, first of all, any other thoughts? Let me just... <laughs> So, so here's what I promised. If we had time at the end, I'd tell a little bit about the virtual Christmas Eve service. We recorded a lot of it on Sunday night, and Diana Beatty has gone above and beyond with all sorts of editorial work, and she is working late nights after teaching uh, high school virtually, which I'm sure isn't, isn't uh, I'm sure it is draining to her, but she's been doing this. And she sent a copy to me and to Marlene this morning and said she was just, can someone watch it and every minute of it make sure the edits are smooth and everything. Mm -hmm. And Marlene said, I want to wait till Christmas Eve so it's fresh for me <laughs> watching it. And I kind of wanted to too, but, but I, I took time to watch it and I gave her a little bit of feedback. They were, I said, didn't we record a little scene? Oh yeah, I was going to put that in. So just a tiny tweaks, uh, but you're going to see different people in their homes that are singing some songs. And uh, she did some nice camera work at the beginning so that you'll see, uh, at least at first, I couldn't tell what it was, but she's standing outside. Well, I'm pointing over there. She's out by the chapel and she's looking at the steeple with a star on it. And then she comes down to the doors and she walks in as you're hearing the prelude music. So it's a wonderful start to the service. Uh, she's put lots of work into it. Martha has done a lot of work. Actually, Mark has done a lot. He's done a lot of recording videos to get uh, Martha in it. And uh, I, I think it's gonna be very special. And uh, there, there was a moment that unexpectedly caught me and I got a little teary uh, this morning watching it. I'm still looking forward to watching it with my family on Christmas Eve, but we wanna get the word out to people to, to share that. The, the link isn't up, but she's still doing some edits, but we'll 
we believe we'll have it set up so that you'll, I hope you can find the link anytime tomorrow and then it will, will actually be activated at six o'clock with the idea that then people all are watching it at the same time together. Although they can, anyone can watch it later, but we'd like people to watch it together. So we go to the website to the church's website, just like we do for a church service. I think Marlene will send out emails like she normally does where, where for her uh, email list. So you'll get it that way. And I'm not sure if we'll get it on the, I hope we'll have it on the, the regular website and whatever I get, I'll also put on the Facebook page too. So I hope we'll have three different ways that people can see it and access it. Oh, you know, lately, lately I haven't gotten it by a separate email. Mm -hmm. So I do hope it comes in an email format. Okay. okay. I'll let her know that, that you haven't yeah. gotten things. We've had a couple other people that, they were on the list for a long time and all of a sudden something happened. So, but as long, you, know. you can find it on the website. So, yes. Yeah, when is the bulletin available? Because I have to print those out for the residents tomorrow. Um, I hope it would be ready in the morning. I know that I finalized, I finalized it and Marlene made a PDF and sent it to our tech committee. In fact, there's a possibility that it's up now, but I, I'm going to take a quick look and see if it is. Um, here. Um, no, we still have the one from last Sunday. So I think that will be soon, but I can send a copy to you by email of the bulletin. Okay. Um, so that you have it. Now I'm trying to find, I'm trying to get back to you all. Okay. Good. And uh, and because I also forgot it was Wednesday, today's the day to pick up the poinsettias. When's the next time? Six. It'll be open six to seven tonight okay. if you can come by. And, or so we just program the doors to be open at that time and you can get them. Thank you. And I happen to know that you are the virtual greeter on the 27th. And I have, I have, did you know that? No, I didn't know that. Because I was this week. Uh, wait, I have it in front of me. Alan is supposed to be the virtual greeter. I'm on the third. I have the schedule up here. Okay, maybe. I Unless they changed it. Okay. okay. Um, well, I don't want to waste everybody else's time with that then. Okay, so uh, Merry Christmas to everyone, and we'll be together in the virtual worship, and then I hope to see our virtual Christmas Eve service, and then virtual worship on Sunday. Sunday. Yeah. Good. Somebody's phone's ringing. Okay. And stop recording.